Welcome to the channel, ladies and gentlemen. This article is brilliant. So by now, a lot of people have seen Terminator Dark Fate. Uh, Europe, uh, well, UK, France, uh, I think even Korea, some Asian markets, all saw it about a week and a half ago. It was released to those markets first. Uh, but now, the states, uh, stateside, USA and kind of other key markets are now getting Terminator Dark Fate. And with it, a lot of people are seeing the opening scene. Now, full spoilers in this video, okay? So, full spoilers, this is about uh, the opening scene. Click off it if you don't want to be spoiled, but, I mean, they spoiled it anyway. They spoiled it for themselves. So, Tim Miller has uh, openly discussed the opening scene, John Connor's secret role, a.k.a. being shotgun blasted to the fucking chest and dying. <laughs> Uh, it's, it's hilarious. It's hilarious. Now, obviously, I've, I've done lots of videos on this movie, this franchise in general. But we've not had any actual comments from the director about that scene yet. And I knew it. I knew when we did that it would just be full of ego and dripping with narcissism. And he did not disappoint. This guy literally thinks the sun shines out his ass when he makes films. It is... I don't understand it. So Terminator director on Linda Hamilton's moment, uh, key moment, and John Connor's secret role being fucking killed. Um, <laughs> the laughable thing is, right, even in the opening bits, Dark Fate filmmaker Tim Miller weighs in on the first time audiences see Sarah Connor on screen. It was really hard for Linda to do this scene and the conversations surrounding John's storyline. You'd think it was probably a controversial decision, but it really wasn't. It's not what the fans say, mate. <laughs> it's really not what the fans say. So when Tim Miller was handed the keys to the Terminator Kingdom series creator, James Cameron also handed him something else. It was a list of action scenes Cameron has wanted to do over the years, but never has. What, like the identical scenes that we've already seen in other movies? <laughs> they were just his little personal list of cool shit I'd like to do someday. Um, this is the on the Hollywood Reporter, so this is all an exclusive to uh, the Hollywood Reporter. Now, it's, it's, a, it's a long interview, basically. And some of the stuff in this is is just it's pure, it's comedy gold. Like it really is. Uh, Cameron's list was in good hands, was it? Was it? I can see why this dude was fired from Deadpool now. Coming up with cool shit has been Miller's job for decades as a visual effects artist. Miller rose to prominence as a director three years ago when he helmed his first feature, the raunchy comic book movie Deadpool, which became the top R-rated film of all time, recently dethroned by the Joker. Now, with Dark Fate, Miller continues the Terminator storyline and just retreads 1 and 2 <coughs> with original star Linda Hamilton. I'd say I've, I've read this and I've read his responses. I've got to say, I'm just going to preface this whole thing with he's full of shit. <laughs> like, I mean, he's out and out full of shit. I hope you watch this, Tim Miller, because you are full of shit. Come on my show. Come and talk to me, because I'll call you out on it. The Hollywood Reporter doesn't, but I'll call you out on it. You are full of crap. You really are. Now, in addition to Sarah Connor's uh, the Dark Fate features her son, John Connor, the leader of the human resistance in a future that will never happen. Fans were surprised when Cameron announced at Comic-Con that Edward Furlong, who played John in T2 and has fallen out of the public eye after personal and legal issues, would be back. John, it turns out, is an integral part of the film. Why didn't The Hollywood Reporter... Why didn't they cite the fact that he's not actually in it? Fucking... You lose credibility, THR. And I quite like... The Hollywood Reporter for scoops and things. But Jesus Christ. You even say it there. Fans were surprised when Cameron announced at Comic-Con that Edward Furlong would be back. Where is he then? In a conversation with THR, Miller reveals the thought process behind John Connor's role. Basically, why did you kill him? Why did you murder him? Um... Now, he shares that the Dark Fate action sequence he originally intended for Deadpool and discusses charting a new course. So he's literally just recycled an action scene as well. Oh, my God. Now, here you go. You wrote the Dark Fate action sequences yourself. What's your philosophy for surprising audiences who are used to seeing big action scenes? I love stacking the deck against the good guys and then figuring a way out. But the good guys were never in trouble in this film. 
ever. You did. There was no sense of oh, they're going to get killed. They don't have any guns. Well, what do they have? They have a they have an effing old truck. What would be in an old truck? Well, there would be some tools. And then you go, well, she's a super soldier. So she could probably throw something hard enough to smash it through a brick wall. Uh, I always think of it like you're running a simulation of a character in your head. It's really the simulation that you're transcribing. It's not necessarily you writing it. It's a simulation dictating what the character would do and say. And there's always this sort of disconnect when you read it later and you're not running the simulation. It feels like it happened to somebody else. It's weird, but it's it's accurately what I feel when I'm writing. So how much do your ideas for action sequences carry over from movie to movie? For instance, there's an idea that didn't make the cut for Deadpool seep into Dark Fate. It happens a little bit. At the beginning of this process, Jim handed us all this list of disconnected ideas for action scenes. One of them uh, kind of turned into the underwater Humvee scene. He had always wanted to do this action scene where a car fell through the ice in a river and was washed along the river underneath the ice. That was the genesis of this damn scene. It was a yeah, damn scene. It was pretty cool to get this list of what if a tank drove down Main Street and then went through a mall. All these ideas from Jim Cameron that he always wanted to see that were not connected to anything in particular. They were just his little personal list of cool shit I'd like to see someday. How many action ideas did you get far along with that never made it into Dark Fate? Uh, I had one bit that we did in previs, but we cut. The highway sequence was twice as long, which we knew about anyway. There was a whole other sequence where after the truck wreck, um, I think we knew about that anyway. The Rev-9 goes after him, it kills a cop who comes to investigate the burned truck. Blah, 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 blah. Basically, that was too long. Now, the I had a motorcycle chase where Deadpool is on a motorcycle the way I wrote it in Dark Fate is the Rev-9 split into two figures and they're chasing after the ladies and they shoot down the motorcycle and the motorcycle is, is uh, wrecking but the Rev-9 jumps off right before the rocket hits the motorcycle and lands on the back of a flatbed truck. So anyway, now it says, by now you have Jim Cameron's list of awesome scenes for the future. I won't steal Jim's list for another movie though. Uh, fine, whatever. Now, here's where we get to some interesting things. The first shot of Linda Hamilton back as Sarah Connor is arguably the most important shot in the film, wherein the shooting schedule did that fall. Had Linda been shooting for a while, so she was comfortable in Sarah's skin once again. Originally, the first time I wrote that, it was just the automatic shotgun. It wasn't the bazooka. As I'm writing it, I'm like, man, it's cool, but it's not quite satisfying enough. So Jim originally wanted to use the same shotgun they used in T2, and I thought that's not going to be big enough. Then we... Uh, big is always better, right? That's oh, nonsense. Uh, then when we get down to this confrontation between two Terminators, we thought, okay, I need something else to take care of the second one. We did the rocket launcher. It wasn't too deep into filming. It had been a few weeks, but it was really hard for Linda to do this scene. Not because she's not super capable. She is. But if you look at it carefully, you, to have to get out of a car with that giant effing shotgun, there's not a lot of room, and you have a rocket launcher strapped to your back, and you have to do that while looking cool. It really became this sort of logistical thing. That's hilarious. Absolutely hilarious. Now, let's uh, plod along down to this. So, there's some comments about Dark Fate being R-rated. It was barely R-rated. There was barely any blood. Um, it was It's R-rated just because of cursing, which is utter trash. So, there are some comments with respect to that. So it says, Deadpool being R-rated was considered a big risk. You made some concessions in terms of budget being lower to get that rating. While filming Dark Fate, you filmed options so that it could be R or PG-13. Did you make concessions on Dark Fate once it became apparent it would be R? In hindsight, it was kind of the best of all possible worlds because I covered myself for R, hoping that one way or another there was going to be an R-rated version of the movie. If it was not the main release, at least it would be an additional release. We had already talked about uh, simultaneous release. <sighs> Honestly, uh, they budgeted it like a PG-13 movie that was going to have a broader audience and they didn't change. The Again, this is going to come back and bite you in the ass, mate, because $200 million. You have to make somewhere in the reason of five to $600 million to even remotely see any profit off this film. Especially, this, this movie has had a lot of marketing, so that's a big marketing budget for this film as well. And then a the comment about Tim Miller's profusive use of F-bombs. Plus, it isn't a Tim Miller movie without some F-bombs. 
Honestly, it wasn't like I was forcing Linda to drop some F-bombs. You can't stop her from doing it. She cusses like a sailor in real life. I mean, that's funny. Okay. Uh, do you know who ultimately made the call on the rating? Are you calling Paramount's Jim Giannopoulos or Skydance's David Ellison to get the okay? I haven't reached anywhere near the power that I would need to make them make that decision if they thought they were going to lose money. The only real thing I influenced that that I had under my control is I don't really feel like everybody knew how grim and gritty a movie we were making. It's not that grim or gritty. Here we go. So, spoilers. I mean, I've said it already, and I've already told you the spoiler. <laughs> how much did you debate John Connor's role in this film and the decision to kill him off? Was there ever a thought to have John be a bigger part of it? Get ready, fans. You're going to be pissed. You'd think killing John off was probably a controversial decision, but it really wasn't. Oh, what are you talking about, bro? What are you talking about? There was a lot of talk at the really early stages of should this new saviour be someone who was connected to the, to the Connors? Should it be John's daughter or something like that? Which I was always against because I'm just not a fan of the chosen one sort of movie as much as I am of a hero sort of rising to meet adversity. One, matey boy, it is a chosen one film. This whole film is a chosen one. Who the hell is this lass? This little Mexican chick. She's no. She's nobody, she's a nothing. She's not training, she's not rising to meet adversity. She's just a chosen one, exactly the same way John Connor was. It's shot for shot, fucking tame, with a race swap, gender swap, minority character. It is pathetic. Why didn't anyone call you out on this crap? You're talking out your ass. <sighs> now, anyway, so he continues and he says, Who could be an every man or an every woman? I identify with those people much more than I do with Neo in the Matrix or King Arthur or something like that. So I was all for this being some new person that wasn't connected to the Connors and had been chosen by the hand of fate. It literally says it in the film. She's just John Connor. Uh, what the fuck are you talking about? Did you even watch your own movie? We all knew a couple of things. One, Sarah Connor is not a happy character. She's best when she's driven and tragic. And you need some rocket fuel for that. You can't have John be a 36-year-old accountant somewhere. And really, when you think about it, he could be sort of a pathetic figure as a man who had missed his moment in history and was relegated to this banal, ordinary existence. No! No. Wrong. Wrong, wrong, wrong. This shows the limitation of Tim Miller as an idea man. You can't have John be a 36-year-old accountant. So don't fucking write him like a 36-year-old accountant, then dickhead. Like, it's, it's just not just me, is it? Surely. You're in control of the story. Write it however you want. Don't write him as a 36-year-old accountant. He's got all this military training. Why would he just become an accountant? And if... No one, if this new chick is just chosen by the hand of fate, and Skynet never came to be, and John Connor didn't actually need to die for this new person, apparently, as per your statement, to be chosen by the hand of fate, then just have him pop up and be like, I've got all this training, so Sarah Connor, we now know that there's a dodgier future. Christ. Let's put all this training to good use, we'll train you, future leader of the resistance. Fuck me. This goes to show Tim Miller cannot write for shit. He's a bad ideas man. Why is no one calling you out on this? Um, like, he could be a sort of pathetic figure as a man who had missed his moment in history. So don't write him like that. Now, when in fact, had Sarah not chosen to destroy Cyberzine, he would be the, the leader of humanity. Nobody wants to see that. Secondly, John's death, that's rocket fuel for Sarah. Uh, and lastly, you need to clear the stage for these new characters. No, you don't. No, you don't. Not only that, Tim Miller, here's the flaw and the hypocrisy in your statement. We need to clear the stage for these new characters that you're going to love, because this is where we want the, the story to go. But hey, hey... We'll fondle your balls and get you excited for the old characters, though, won't we? Eddie's back as Furlong. Uh, Eddie Furlong's back as John. 
Linda Hamilton's back as Sarah Connor. Arnold Schwarzenegger's back as the T-800. You fucking teased that enough, didn't you? Fucking dickhead. Absolute dick. You can't write for shit. No one is calling out on this. People really do need to. And lastly, you need to clear the stage for these new characters. They are not going to be able to have their moment or come into their moment with John hanging around. Yes, they are. Shows that you can't write for shit. There's just no good way to do that. Yes, there is. Shows you can't write for shit. Everybody was in pretty strong agreement. And the way to start it was really, you want to have this dramatic impact. You want to slap the audience in the face and say, wake up. This is going to be different. It wasn't though, was it? It was shot for shot remake. I feel like that accomplished that. I hate the violence of it. I hate the idea of a kid being shot. But the dramatic fuel that it gives the story is kind of undeniable. You are a tit. Tim Miller is first rate crap. He can't. He literally can't write movies, can he? Anyway, what do you guys think of this? Let me know down below in the comments. If you're new here, make sure you do hit subscribe. Um, I've been pushing like my merch for a little while. I, I spent a long time getting good designs for my merch. Um, but if you want to support the channel further, just head on over to my Patreon for as little as a dollar a month. You can have access to well, a whole host of benefits. Uh, primarily, game playthroughs. Two game playthroughs a week. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching. We missed H. Take care.